Why does Wrath of the Lich King feel so forgotten? I actually have the answer for that. But hey, let's first watch what Nixium has to say on that matter. What the heck happened to Wrath of the Lich King? It seemed like a few months ago or whenever Wrath of the Lich King came out, everybody was losing their minds about Wrath, including Blizzard. People were making videos about it left and right. Machinima was popping up about the Lich King again. All this sort of hype was just across the internet for Wrath of the Lich King. This is what like classic World of Warcraft was all about. It was all about getting to Wrath of the Lich King. Yes, classic WoW is great. Yeah, Ragnaros and all that garbage. And yeah, TBC, Outer Space and Draenei and Illidan. Man, screw that. It's all about getting to the Lich King, dude. Climbing Ice Crown Citadel, killing the Lich King. Dude, that's what classic WoW was all about. People were freaking hyped for this expansion. And you know what? It came out and it's like nobody gives a shit anymore. Like no one cares. Yeah. What the heck happened? That's not surprising. Now, I, I admit, I'm gonna be 100% <coughs> transparent here. I love Wrath of the Lich King. I'm wearing a freaking- Like the launch was really great with Wrath of the Lich King, especially because like when it came out, like there were a lot of players from Rita WoW that were already bought with the content because they've done it over and over again. And some just wanted to go way back like how it used to be and just relive basically their memories, right? So launch was really big, but the same was with like uh, normal classic WoW, right? Like when it launched, it was really big for a couple of months. But you can see the same phenomenon with every single new game as well out there. Like look at freaking Valheim when it came out or New World when it came out. Like every new game is usually hyped in the first couple of months. But there's something else that you need for a game to last very long. And I will later talk about this. Freaking Nixium Death Knight shirt right now, yo. But even I'm not playing it right now. And I sat here earlier today and yesterday in the past few days and I'm like, why the heck am I not playing Wrath of the Lich King? What have I been doing this entire time? I could be playing my Death Knight and going through like old you play and other games and, and, have and, other stuff to do. and what's everybody else doing? Where's all the Wrath content? Where's all the Wrath love? Blizzard was pumping out social media posts left and right back in the day where they were just like, dude, Wrath is coming, dude. Check out them Death Knights. Check out that Lich King. Check out Northrend Penguins. And now it's just like, it, it's just all stopped. I want to talk about Wrath of the Lich King today. I want to talk about what I think is the problem with Wrath and where Blizzard, I think, might have messed up a little bit when it came to Wrath of the Lich King. But first, we do have to thank this channel's sponsor, Zygor. If you uh, want the ultimate Zygor. World of Warcraft add-on for leveling in Dragonflight or Classic, profession guides, mount collecting, pet collecting, endgame progression, just whatever you want, you need to check out Zygor, linked down below in the description. It is known as World of Warcraft's greatest add-on, for a reason. Wrath of the Lich King was World of Warcraft's like biggest, most importantest expansion. It is Wrath of the Lich King. It was that expansion where World of Warcraft reached its peak population of over 12 million players online. And people loved this expansion. That was because of Warcraft 3. Like, out of players that actually played WoW were former Warcraft 3 players, right? So, like, there was maybe a small percentage of players that never played Warcraft, the strategy game before, right? Or Warcraft 3. Uh, that uh, played WoW, right? But I would say like at least 90% of all WoW players back in the day came from Warcraft 3 or they at least knew about it, right? So it was no surprise that Wrath of the Lich King was the favorite expansion because that is actually the conclusion of Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne. Like what will happen to Arthas? Because we don't get to kill him during uh, Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne, right? So, so there must be some sort of conclusion and people were looking for the end. Like what is going to happen with Arthur's now, right? So they really enjoyed this expansion. And there were actually some people that did not play WoW before, but they played, for example, Warcraft 3, but they were not into MMOs. They didn't want to try one. But when Wrath of the Lich King came out, even those players that have not played WoW yet, they decided to give it a shot, right? So that was why it was so popular. They loved the Death Knights. They loved the continuation oh, and new of class Arthas' is always line. exciting. They loved Northrend, players. the snow, the tundra, the Aurora Borealis and shit. Dude, it was freaking awesome, dude. Wrath of the Lich King introduced Inscription. It updated the talent trees. It made the classes more fun to play as. Wrath of the Lich King was a very good expansion when it came out, and it has gone down in history as World of Warcraft's best expansion ever made. Peak yeah. World of Warcraft, many people would argue. Nothing beats Wrath of the Lich King. 
And Numbers, so, no. when Blizzard re-released Classic WoW back in 2019, like I said, everybody was hyped to get to Wrath of the Lich King, including myself. I was making videos even saying things like, hey, let's see what people are gonna say about Wrath of the Lich King. It's been a couple of years since back then when Wrath first came out. And, you know, are people going to like Wrath? Are they going to think it's cool? Or are they going to think of it's boring? Of course they're going to like it. we're in 2023. It. I guess we're going to find out. And here's what I think happened. First of all, I'm just going to be blunt here. I think that everyone and their mom forgot that, yes, Wrath was a good expansion, but it wasn't that good of an expansion, okay? I played Wrath of the Lich King back in the day. Like, when I was a young children, mm -hmm, I was, like, playing some Wrath of the Lich King. And I'll tell you right now from first-hand experience, this expansion was not as good as people say it was. Like, was it a good expansion? Of course it was a good expansion, but there was a lot of cons with Wrath that There's people talked about on the forums. Cons. People were making videos about it, Machinima about it, whatever. Same with Shadowlands, there are also some pros there. And I think even these problems have cons. resurfaced and people are now aware of them. First and foremost, let's just talk about lore. Wrath of the Lich King's lore was kind of weird. You have Arthas, everybody's favorite World of Warcraft lore character, and all throughout, like, Wrath's lore, Arthas is kind of just doing a, I'll get you next time, kids. Like, he's kind of pulling that over and over. Or like he with the arena? Up, he sees you, you're causing trouble for the Scourge. But he doesn't you know, do anything. I'll, I'll get you next time. You better not keep messing with me or I'm gonna get you. And then he just leaves. And you're kind of like, dude, like, can you just like kill me? Like, come on, like, like kill me, daddy. Mm. The Lord you know what, what mistake they did here, the writers? And this is something that I would have done if I was the writer. So I would actually have uh, portrayed Arthas as a character that actually has two personalities. Like, that there's some good still in him that's like trying to fight over the, 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 the Lich King sort of uh, persona, right? Like they're like two personas in one. And the reason why he doesn't kill us players is because he has some inner conflict and something's holding him back or something. And then maybe in the raid, he, for some reason, like the good Arthas completely vanishes because the other persona does some sort of spell or ritual or something. Like, it would have been actually cool if Arthas was a two-faced character, right? But they actually missed up on this opportunity and they made him purely evil without a good part that is still in him, right? And then it made it seem look so dumb and stupid when he encountered us players and he didn't attack us or finish us off and he always say next time, next time, right? But if... But if he would have had really two personalities and a good one, the good one is kind of like trying to hold back to like, uh, kind of like, oh, please save me sort of to the player sort of uh, wish, right? Um, it would have been more interesting in my opinion. So the writers, they missed out on an opportunity. Like like each time I, I see sort of some sort of plots, these days especially in like, uh, wow. I always think about what if they've written it like just a tiny bit different, just like a small detail. Like it could have added so much more immersion to it. So yeah, people maybe lack this kind of immersion because of that, like this immersion that Arthur is the, the most evil guy, right? Because he spared us, but he wasn't good even. Like it was kind of strange. Here, I'm gonna get you. And then he just leaves. And you're kind of like, dude, like, can you just like kill me? Like, come on, like, like kill me, daddy. Mm. The lore was a little bit weird, and of course in Ice Cream Citadel this was answered because, you know, Arthas was trying to create the most powerful, you know, undead people that he could find, and that's like you guys, like fighting the Lich King or something. Kind of strange, you know, it's very hit or miss for some people. The Death Knight lore, for example, how the hell did the Death Knights break free of the Lich King's command? In the comic Thessarian, it shows that if the Lich King commands you to kill your own family, you will kill them. No yeah. hesitation. You, you, no hesitation whatsoever. <laughs> You're just watching yourself do horrible Same with things. Goose. You're just completely tormented by it, but you will obey the Lich King. But apparently in the lore of Light's Hope Chapel, like the whole battle there, apparently the Lich King betraying Mograine and the Knights of the Ebon Blade, apparently that makes them go, hey, you're an asshole. We're not gonna listen to you anymore. And that's the lore, like that, that's what happens. And don't give me that, Oh shit, you know, it was the, it was the Ashbringer, dude. The Ashbringer's light, you know, made them like f become free of the Lich King, whatever. Mograine and friends had already decided to like betray the Lich King. Like he threw the corrupted Ashbringer to Tyri and the whole light thing hadn't even happened yet. And he already decided, hey man, the Lich King's an asshole. I'm not gonna follow him. So don't- You know how I would have written it better? I would have said there's like maybe some sort of crystal or something that's attached to the yeah, to maybe Frostmon, right? And during this battle, actually, we are evil, but but Arthas appears to help us. 
And for some reason, I don't know, like the sword cracks a little or some stone falls off or something. That was what was controlling us. Or like Arthur gets like heavily injured or something and that breaks us free, right? That would have been cooler, right? Like imagine there was actually some sort of, I don't know, a spell that's being cast by some some mage on Arthur that does something. Like if there would have been some sort of ritual or maybe we were actually walking into a trap of some sort of holy spell and a portion survives of us and those that survive are now free of the control or something, right? Like what if there was like some holy circle trap and you walk into it and like 50 person die and those that survive are for some reason now free. Like if there would have been some cool explanation to that or some some others, or maybe like Frostman gets like a little crack or something from, I don't know, hitting something. That would have been more interesting, right? Well, give me that BS lore explanation. I'm sick of seeing that in the damn comment section. Learn the, the chronological sequence of events of that of lore event, yo. But no damn Ashbringer. They were just angry. They were salty that the Lich King told them to go out there and die. And that shouldn't have happened. Anyway, the point is, is that the lore was a little bit questionable. The dungeons and stuff were also very, very easy. This was the introduction of Tank and Spank, World of Warcraft, and people did not like it. Back in TBC and in Classic WoW, polymorphing and sapping and crowd control, like that was a thing, dude. That was a thing. And everybody freaking loved it, except for the people that didn't like it. <laughs> but that was like, that was how you did a World of Warcraft, that's how you did a World of Warcraft dungeon. And then Wrath yeah. of the Lich King comes along. The Lich King with his big fucking frozen wiener and he just slaps that across the face and knocks that out of the game. Now it's just tank and spank, dude. Just run through the dungeon as fast as you can. Get those little emblems, whatever, blah, 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 blah. It was annoying. The raids at launch, oh my goodness, dude. Nax Ramus was a freaking joke, okay? <laughs> Nobody liked Nax. Sartharion, with, even with three drakes, it was not that fun. The mechanics are a bit boring, right? Dude, you guys remember that Machinima Ulduar? You know, I ain't got no epics, ain't got no achievements cause I ain't first rate. That video was amazing. And not, what is that video about? That's just complaining that people just want to really get to Ulduar because the raiding scene really sucked at the beginning of Wrath of the Lich King. PVP was a freaking nightmare because Wintergrasp was just a laggy mess. Like causing lag for all these servers. Didn't like it was Listen, fun. Wrath of the Lich King was not as good as people said it was, okay? Like it, like it was good, but damn, it wasn't that good. It was not like the holy grail of World of Warcraft, yo. And I think that people got into Wrath of the Lich King, you know, with this, you know, this re-release and they're like, oh, wow. Th this expansion sometimes- Okay, let me explain you guys now why Wrath of the Lich King is not so popular right now and why the hype was not there that like people expected. So, okay, I give you guys a very, very good example. So each time a new game comes out, it tends to be super hyped. We had this with New World, we had this with Lost Ark, we had this back in the day with Valheim. Like each time a game is new, it is interesting because you're experiencing a story for the first time, right? But if you re-release a game, Another example is not, not just Wrath of the Lich King Classic, but like Skyrim Remastered and then Anniversary Edition. Have you actually noticed, if you look at like the player numbers, each time a same game gets re-released, the numbers are of course not as high as they were from the like previous uh, release of the game, right? So when Skyrim came out for the first time, the player numbers were crazy high within like the first one, two years, right? It was insane. People were like going for the game like crazy. They were like buying it completely, like the shelves empty in the, in the, in the game stores and stuff, especially here in Germany. Like sometimes it was actually hard to find a, a copy of Skyrim because everyone would just buy it, right? It was crazy. Then the game's out and then like a remastered version comes out and Unlike like Wrath of the Lich King Classic, the remastered version actually has better graphics. So it would still drag some players to try this again and relive their memories, right? But even with the remastered version with better graphics, what do not exist by the way in Wrath of the Lich King Classic, because there's like not really a big update, right? Uh, still the numbers are not uh, as high. And then what happened? Skyrim uh, Anniversary Edition comes out, the number are even less than for the remastered version. For the special edition and that's the same with wrath of the lich king classic if you have played something already before and you know how the story is you know the ending of it it's now more exciting it's not as exciting like sure you could say there was a long gap of time you have forgotten a lot and that is actually true i feel the same if i play the old uh, zelda games like zelda ocarina of time on nintendo or something i get a little excited because i know i've forgotten at least like 40 percent of what's going on in the game or something right at least 
So there's a bit of excitement again because of the long break. But I remember at least 60%, so I can't get the 100% excitement that I had when I first played it. Because I already know the game. And it's the same with Wrath of the Lich King Classic. If Blizzard would make a World of Warcraft 2, it would be way more hyped, trust me, than Wrath of the Lich King Classic or any re-release. So what I think they should focus on is make a new game. Just make a new World of Warcraft 2 that takes place maybe two or three hundred years after current events. Then you can also get rid of uh, popular characters right now and write a completely new story with new characters, right? There's no more Jaina, there's no more, I don't know, Bolva or someone. Like, just write a brand new story that takes place two, three hundred years later after the current events and with like new engine, new graphics, maybe new sort of zones with new climates, maybe some new continent or, or something, right? Like, there is the option for Blizzard to do that and they still choose not to and that is, I think, stupid. They should start at least the pre-development of it or something. This kind of licks balls because it kind of did. Also, did I mention Death Knights are slightly overpowered in Wrath of Lich King? Did I mention that? Well, just so you know. So that's 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 like the first thing that I think might have caused people to lose a lot of interest in Wrath of Lich King. Yeah. But um, it's definitely not the big thing. The big thing is that Blizzard decided to do something which, I mean, I can't fault them for this. I really can't. But Blizzard decided to release Dragonflight around the exact same time that Wrath of the Lich King came out. You can see the dates on your screen right now. Yeah, what they're of course going to try Dragonflight. Like your player base is already going to be divided between classic and, you know, modern retail WoW. And yet you sort of intentionally orchestrate the division by releasing these two expansions around the exact same <laughs> what time. What the heck is this? Kind of strange. Dragonflight, look. Dragonflight is not a bad expansion, okay? Anyone who's played Dragonflight seriously can say it's okay. It's certainly better than Shadowlands. It's not amazing. It's not going to blow your mind. Yeah, and of Dragonflight, course not. it's got its cons. It don't exactly feel like, you know, OG Warcraft, you know, orcs versus humans. Like just a percentage of players will be blown and away by it. the factions together. You're going around petting these adorable looking dragons and stuff like Yes, Dragonflight I think it's a has good its expansion. Cons, but as a whole, it's an okay expansion. Yeah, I and think so it's, it's good. And so it's not really that surprising that a lot of Wrath of the Lich King players, once Dragonflight came out, they went and played Dragonflight. I mean, that's what a lot of people would do, obviously. And you know what's Plus strange the plot is, is that more after simple, Dragonflight like came Lance. out, it's like Blizzard just gave up on all the marketing for Wrath of the Lich King. I, I don't know if anybody else noticed that. Am I the only one? Because maybe they want to push for their latest expansion and be because they saw Dragonflight wasn't actually that bad. Yeah, maybe the, the numbers were not there of like a lot of players uh, coming there for the first time or returning, right? But those that stayed actually stayed longer during Dragonflight. Like I had this impression, and I still see this today, that those that actually played WoW or with or for Dragonflight, that a lot of those players are still around. They did not just play for like one, two months and be like, ah, I don't like it, goodbye. No, actually they stayed, but the numbers were not high. So yeah, there's still some decline in population. It was like Wrath of the Lich King marketing and memes and everything was all over Blizzard's social media, videos, promotions, patch overviews with content creators, blah, 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 everything that you can imagine. And then suddenly, like, all that stopped. It was like, oh, uh, Dragonflight's out now, so, you know, screw Wrath yeah. of the Lich King. And it's like Blizzard kind of gave up on it. Like, uh, the gap should have been two or three months longer, I, anyway, I think, that Blizzard the just release, gave up least. on Wrath of the Lich King once Dragonflight came out. But that's just my opinion. I don't know if anybody else feels that way. That's that, but that's my that was that was my impression. Yeah. Wrath of the Lich King did continue you know, to trudge one. along. Yes, there were videos made to promote like new patches and whatnot. Yes, you know they got Hurricane in there. He was making those awesome CGI cinematic things promoting what was coming up next. Hurricane, fantastic. I love his work. Check him out. But Wrath of the Lich King seemed to have been slightly discarded in favor of Dragonflight. Not that surprising. Obviously, Blizzard wants to promote their new product. But then there was a third problem, and it was Which something one? that I don't think anybody could have foreseen. And that was the rise of Hardcore Classic. Oh, OG classic. more division, wow. yes. Hardcore, of course, is the thing that Blizzard eventually copied and decided to make their own version of. But That's my fear with um, Cataclysm Classic, if it ever comes out. That if we have like a Wrath of the Lich King uh, server, a Hardcore server, a regular WoW Classic server, like we're going to end up on... That is insane. We're going to have like four servers, right? For Classic. 
like this this is going to divide the community even further like we're gonna have like oh my gosh th that's gonna be very very difficult to actually maintain a high population all for before blizzard released official hardcore realms so, you had this yeah they have to figure something out here in the classic world of warcraft community i was a part of it Just certainly make a too, of come all on. these people going back to the original we'll vanilla old games servers again. and doing hardcore runs just playing the game over and over, seeing if you could make it to level 60. You know, you only got one life, death equals delete, so on and so forth. I even got a t-shirt for that, for those of you guys that are <laughs> hardcore fans out there. I love this t-shirt. I actually got one right here. Hey, let me hey, have a look. Check this thing out, dude. Death Ooh. equals delete. That looks actually look nice. It's amazing. It's kind of all wrinkly though, because I was wearing it yesterday. Did he designed this? Anyway, link down below in the description. The point is, is that World of Warcraft Hardcore shoved its big throbbing hand into <laughs> into the Wrath of the Lich King population what? and stole a ton of the player base. That didn't help Wrath of the Lich King either. Every single person and their mom was playing freaking hardcore and just running these yeah, damn Yeah, just take all those slices of and pizza and until and there's no more Blizzard pizza left. <laughs> these official hardcore realms. So you got Dragonflight going on, you got Classic WoW going on, you got Wrath of the Lich King going on, and you got Hardcore WoW going on. Like, it's all over the place, man. Now, I'm not complaining about that. Okay, before you leave that damn comment down below saying, look at you, you asked for like, you know, this division of people playing their own versions of world i mean Warcraft. hardcore is fun right about it. i ain't complaining about that at all bitch all right i actually think that's a great thing but it certainly didn't help the damn wrath of the lich king population that's no. all i'm trying to say anyway there's also a fourth thing fourth element that nobody wants to talk about and it's simply this blizzard entertainment kind of licks balls when it comes to their pr right now okay blizzard is still kind of seen as a big freaking joke in the gaming community it just is because what of their scandal okay? like blizzard you know all the scandals that have happened in the office aside you ain't ever going to recover from the damn fruit bowl incident for example <laughs> <laughs> oh this was so funny like you know what, like so strange about the censorship in game i feel like we players got kind of punished for something that happened uh in their studio right like it was kind of strange because it was like the problem wasn't like the artwork there that there was like a belly dancer picture and it turned into a freaking fruit like the problem was like a legal one all we would have liked to see is a legal me method being done right like hey you should like freaking take them to court court or something and make this public like hey so and so harass someone um he's now going to court he's going to be charged with something like there should have just been justice done on those individuals legally legal consequences for their behavior and no freaking censorship in a game like it's about justice not about censoring a game like this was so stupid they should have just done some some some, some legal case opened it up made it public said so and so will be punished now or something like, that was so stupid with the, the censorship in-game. All the scandals oh my that have gosh. happened in the office aside, you ain't ever gonna recover from the damn football incident, like a incident, punishment towards example. the players. Ain't no one's gonna forget that. Just punish those individuals, not all of us. Player base. Let's put it that way. The, the point is, there's a lot of people out there that don't want to give Blizzard money, okay? They don't want to give Blizzard a dime. So what they're doing is these people want to play World of Warcraft, they don't want to give Blizzard any money, so what are they doing? They're going and playing on private servers, yo. They're going and playing on like freaking Turtle Wow and Ascension <laughs> Turtle, and all these other wow, private servers Ascension, and stuff. Oh my that's gosh. giving better content than Blizzard Entertainment is. And that didn't help the Wrath of a Lich King population. That didn't help the World of Warcraft population in general. And all these private servers, they don't give a shit. They're just collecting all these players left and right, and their servers are hosted over in Russia, and so Blizzard can't touch them. But now we are finally, you know, nearing the release of Ice Cream Citadel, the final raid of Wrath of the Lich King. And can Blizzard turn this around? Can they make Wrath of the Lich King, like, you know, all these players flood in to fight the Lich King, and can they make it this big epic conclusion to the most popular expansion of all time? Uh, probably not, <laughs> but if they were gonna do this, That's the edgy. first thing they gotta do is they gotta start promoting the crap out of Wrath of the Lich King again. They gotta yeah. start saying, like, dude, this is your time to fight the Lich King, this is your time to go to Ice Crown Citadel, this is the time to get Shadow Morn, yeah, more this is the time to get that help. frickin' like Frostworm Vanquisher thing, or whatever it's called, that damn flying mount that I fly around with on Nixium that I got years ago. But even the advertisement will not be enough though, because it's a re-release of something that a lot of people already know, then there's Dragonflight, and now we get like a, the, the big uh, update for Dragonflight, right, where we go to the Emerald Dream. 
so it's going to be tough actually for Wrath of the Rich King. Also, when we look at like now how we can go to the Emerald Dream in Dragonflight, a lot of players that are now on some sort of Dragonflight break, they will also return there. So, you know, you, you got to make it like this big event, Blizzard. Mm. Hype it up. Do some races. Do some events. This is the Lich King that you're talking about. Start building I mean, hype, events yo. are nice, Aside but that, though, that's pretty they're just much temporarily. All they, can do. they ain't doing it. It's kind of sad. I mean, people aren't people don't really appreciate Wrath of the Lich King as much as they used to back in the day. And, you know, I'm included in that list. I'm not playing Wrath of the Lich King right now. I'm because playing played, classic WoW Hardcore. Now that I'm recording this whole before, video, though, because like every cool. fiber of my being is like, dude, I got that paladin, dude. He's like level 74, man. He's like in Dragon uh, Dragon Blight or whatever. Like, go, go level him. Like, that's what Blight. I'm thinking once I'm done recording this. So uh, maybe I'll play some Wrath of the Lich King. I don't know. But I don't know. Kind of wish that Wrath had gotten a little bit more love, more of the love that maybe it deserved. I wish that Blizzard maybe had put even more attention onto it with its like promotional materials to really get more people what? involved. And, but nobody could have predicted, you know, these private servers like they need really to attract growing new in popularity players. or classic WoW Not or bring old ones back. That. And to be fair, if those things wouldn't have happened, who knows where World of Warcraft would be right now? World of Warcraft might just be dead in the water because nobody would care about it. I don't know. If you've sat through this whole video, though, and you've just been like, dude, what makes Wrath of the Lich King such a big deal anyway? You got to watch the video on your screen right now. What makes Wrath of the Lich King such a big deal? This video explains why this expansion is so beloved by the community. Yeah, I mean, we mentioned some, right? Like the conclusion to Warcraft 3 Frozen Throne and stuff, how we got like for the first time a new class and stuff. So, yeah, definitely. And also the new zone was very fun to check out. Um, but this is the, the problem with like, games when you try to make a remastered version or re-release them. We saw the same with Skyrim. Now people just want an Elder Scrolls 6 finally and stuff. Um, yeah, like... I feel like if there's a franchise that's like super popular and you want to keep that franchise alive and hyped, you need to come up with some new plot, some new story and make, make a part two, just like chapters, right? Like, oh, the base game that was like super popular is chapter one. Then there's like a chapter two. It can have even different characters, different time period. And you just do it in chapters, right? I mean, just look at like, uh, what is a good example for this? I mean, you could treat WoW kind of like their previous Warcraft product, right? Like the strategy game. There were like people playing Warcraft uh, 1, right? And there, there was like a large player base. When Warcraft 2 came out, the large player base moved from Warcraft 1 to Warcraft 2 because it was more modern, it was like a new story, then to Warcraft 3. And you could do the same with like MMOs, right? Like having a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, and each 5-6 years there's like one new game or something. That can work, actually. But yeah, it's up to Blizzard. But yeah, if you guys are new to this channel, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button for more content. If you guys enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give this one a thumbs up. And I will see you guys next time.